All right, we're on to dry fly fishing, which is the adult fly sitting on the surface of the water. Most fly anglers will say that this is the most exciting type of fly fishing that you can do. Reason for that is, is that we actually get to see that fish come up to the surface of the water and grab that bug. So we're gonna teach you a little bit about the overhand casting in the dry fly fishing and how we approach those fish. All right, we have some fish rising out in the river, so it's time to put on a dry fly. How we're gonna do that is we wanna do our improved clinch knot. And once we get our improved clinch knot put on this fly, we'll be dressing the fly with floating, and that's gonna keep this fly riding high in the water column. So we put it through the eye, we spin it around five times. Time to now add the float into our fly. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with our gel. So open our little package here. And we're gonna put the gel on the fly. There's a couple important things about applying this gel when you do. The instinct is just to wanna go like this and dab it on there. But what happens with that is you end up with too much gel, it'll weigh your fly down. So what we wanna do is we wanna just take a little bit of gel in our fingers and actually rub it around in our fingers and create a nice thin coat. Now with that thin coat, I can dab it on the fly lightly. Don't want to overdo it. Great, so we have our gel applied. Let's move on to step two. Step two now is we have our dry floatant. We've got that fly gelled like we talked about. We take our floatant, stick our fly in there, Close the top, give it a little shake. Doesn't take much, pop it open, and now we have this thing nice and coated. This fly is gonna float so high in the water column. Let's give it a try. All right, so we're gonna go over that overhead cast and the dry flies and how we present it. So, most importantly, we've talked about this in previous episodes, is the 10 and two. And what does 10 and 2 mean and how we apply it to our dry fly? So with the 10 and 2, what I want you to picture is that your body is a big rotary clock. Meaning that my head is 12 o'clock and my feet are 6. So if I count this out and what it looks like, it would be 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, all the way back around to 12. So what we want to do when we're casting with our overhead is that we want to be stopping with our forward momentum at 10 o'clock and we want to be stopping uh, with our backward momentum at 2 o'clock. So let's apply this. Make sure your hands gripped on the cork the right way with your thumb at the top of the cork in line with your reel. If you're a righty, your left hand on the line. So let's just start with our basic back and forth 10 and 2. As you can see here, what I'm trying to do is create a nice straight line off the tip of my rod. Once you've created that momentum, we're going to lay it down on the water. Now with dry fly fishing, laying it down on the water, we want to lead those fish. So the biggest thing is we find a fish that's rising, we find our target fish. That fish will be rising, eating on the surface of the water. Now if I see a fish here that's rising, the first thing I want to make sure is that I'm a little bit upriver of that fish. I want to be able to throw this fly in the water and feed it down to that fish that's coming up to eat it. So generally, you don't want to be any closer than about two feet to that fish. Ideally for me, I like to be at least about six to eight feet above the, above the fish while it's eating. So let's say that there's a fish down here about 10 feet down from me. Again, I want to lead that fish by six or eight feet. So let's use that overhand cast that we talked about and lay it down. Things that I want you to notice while we're doing this is that once I lay that down, I want to mend the line to create the right speed for our fly to be fed to that fish. Let's give it a shot. Okay, I'm doing my 10 and two. I see my target down here about 10 feet down. I go straight across, I take my mend, I mend it, and I follow the fly down with the tip of my rod. 
five, four, three, two, fish right there. He didn't take it on that one, we'll give it another try. Lay it down, mend, and we're up above the fish about eight feet. We're feeding it down to him. My drift is perfect. Oh, he missed it. So, a couple things about setting the hook. I missed that fish. You want to make sure that you give a little bit of time for that fish to take the fly. What happened there is I pulled that fly out too fast. So, you want that fish to be able to come up to that fly grab that fly and take it at least a second before you set the hook. So really practice that pause when that fish eats the fly. Let's give it another shot. Into my 10 and two, laying my fly down, mending, getting ready to feed it down to the fish. Another important thing when dry fly fishing is to slow down your cast compared to streamer fishing and other types of fishing. What I mean by slowing down my cast is, you don't want to be whipping it as hard. There's not a lot of weight on here, so whipping it around is not going to work as good for you. So what you want to do is you just want to slow down that cast and really let that fly unroll for you. And unroll, slow down that cast. So if you slow down that cast, the other thing that you want to keep an eye on and watch is a lot of, about what your body and the ergonomics of your body. You want to be able to cast efficiently. So while I'm casting, I want you to watch a couple things that I'm doing. Number one is, is I'm keeping my elbow tucked into my body. My arm's not pushed away from my body. So what I want you to picture is that you basically have like a newspaper under your arm while you're casting and you don't want to drop your newspaper. The other piece is, I want you to see how much I'm breaking my wrist. Now everybody's going to say, you don't want to break your wrist at all. Ideally that's what you're working towards. In the beginning, you'll probably break your wrist a little bit. So let's just work on trying to keep our wrist from breaking, our elbow tucked. When we do that, and I'm casting, it takes very little effort. Look at how much effort I'm putting into this. Very little effort, and I'm able to cast at a pretty good distance. What I'm doing is I'm creating this energy with my core. I want to be able to transfer that energy in my core in my arm. So what happens is, is the more that I drop, drop that newspaper and lose that newspaper and my arm goes away from my body, I lose a lot of energy that I'm generating. So if I keep that elbow tucked, that transfer is a lot smoother and efficient and will equal a better cast down the end of the rod. So let's look at it one more time. Elbow tucked, trying to not break my wrist too much, using our 10 and 2 overhead cast. Here we go. And just like that, the line shoots out. Mend our line, feed it down to our fish, point the rod at the fly, set the hook.